People will always try to give you shit for smoking weed and say that it makes you lazy and unproductive, but some of the most famous historical figures of all time used cannabis, and they literally changed the whole world. What's up and welcome back to The Strange Show. If this is your first time here, my name is Matt and I am a cannabis industry employee, a medical marijuana patient. I love to learn everything I can about weed and that's exactly what we do on this channel. So if you wanna learn some new fun facts about weed every week, don't forget to subscribe so you can put some nuggets of knowledge into your strain brain. The classic stereotype of the lazy stoner is something that's been going around for decades, but this stereotype couldn't be further from the truth. From artists to explorers and world leaders and scientists, the history books are full of stoners. When I was making this list, I found some names that really surprised me. So the next time you hear somebody trying to say that weed makes you lazy, tell them about all these cats. How about Francis Crick? The name Francis Crick probably doesn't sound familiar, but this weed smoker is one of the most important scientists in modern history. Francis Crick was one of two scientists who won the Nobel Prize in 1962 for discovering the double helix structure of DNA. The discovery Francis and his partner made established the groundwork for all genetic research and completely changed modern medicine. When Crick wasn't researching in the lab, he was known to do his own personal experimenting with cannabis and LSD. One of the most important scientific discoveries ever made was made by a stoner. Queen Elizabeth I was the queen of England England and Ireland for 44 years and she loved weed. After her half siblings failed with short reigns of the kingdom, the queen's 44 years on the throne helped forge a strong sense of a national identity for the entire kingdom and she wanted weed to be everywhere. Queen Elizabeth I decreed that all landowners were required to grow marijuana crops and she would actually fine anyone who had over 60 acres of land and wasn't growing weed. And she liked to get down too because she kept a fat supply of weed at the palace that she would break out for all of the palace parties. One of the most famous queens of all time thought that all of society should be able to enjoy the benefits of weed. We need leaders like this today. Twas a splendid fragrance of the finest herb in the pipe bowls of William Shakespeare, the most famous playwright and creative mind of the entire 16th century. In 2015, 24 of Shakespeare's tobacco pipes were tested to see exactly what this creative genius had been smoking. And while two of the pipes tested positive for smoked cocaine residue, eight of the pipes tested positive for cannabis residue. One of the most famous and respected writers of all time didn't have one weed pipe or two weed pipes. He had eight weed pipes. I don't even have eight weed pipes. Shakespeare was stoned, dude. Alexander Dumas is one of the greatest French writers in history, and he loved to smoke hashish. Alexander Dumas was the guy who wrote the famous adventure novel, The Three Musketeers. He has over 100,000 pages of work read in over 100 languages, and he even made his own hash club. During his time, everyone in France was smoking hashish, so Alexander Dumas started a club where members could meet to try out different new strains. Dumas has the reputation of being one of the most imaginative writers in all of history, and this cat smoked hash all the time. Queen Victoria ruled the British Empire from 1837 until 1901, guiding the country through the changes of industrialization and using cannabis every single month. The Queen's personal physician said that marijuana is one of the most valuable medicines we possess, and he prescribed it to the Queen every month to help ease the pain from menstrual cramps. One of the most influential women ever who embodied the Victorian era of being elegant and fancy, medical marijuana patients. Huau Tua is another name you have probably never heard and that I probably just pronounced very wrong, but he is the first doctor to ever use an anesthetic during surgery, and he was a major cannabis connoisseur. This was 2,000 years ago when painful surgeries were very difficult to do, but by mixing two of his favorite things, wine and weed, he made a strong recipe he called Mephesian that he used to sedate his patients so he could perform life-saving surgeries that had previously been very hard to do because of the pain. The godfather of all surgical anesthetics, 100% weed lover. 
Ramses the Great is often regarded as the most powerful and most celebrated pharaoh during the most powerful period of ancient Egypt, and he was mad stone. The use of cannabis was very common in ancient Egypt, and studies have found traces of cannabis in mummified remains in multiple tombs, including that of Ramses the Great. Researchers said that his remains had a significant deposition of THC, likely obtained through cannabis smoke. The most powerful Egyptian pharaoh of all time, super stoned on THC. And the ancient Egyptians all used weed in some really cool and innovative ways, and you can learn all about that in this video. Or check out this video to see how cannabis first made its way to the United States. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe for good vibes and those nuggets of knowledge, because when you watch The Strange Show, it's like going to weed college. Peace.